So I had sort of an aha experience this morning. Uh, you have to understand that Revelation is unfolding to me like in real time. And as I get something new, I, I share it with you. It's not like I have this whole theology that's all developed and, um, you know, I understand everything about Revelation in the end times. That's not true. I'm, I get personal insight into this stuff like, you know, on an ongoing basis. And so when I have something that I think is worthy of sharing, I, I put it out there to you all. And of course, those of you who've been following me for a while know that there are some things that I've changed my mind on, some things that I've deleted, some things that I've developed, but it's all part of a process of learning. And part of the process of learning is unlearning things that were not true. Uh, another part of the process is actually going back to the basics, to what do um, specific terms in the Bible mean. But what I want to talk about is the idea of kings and priests, because that's what um, our inheritance is. Our, you know, the big deal about being a saved Christian and walking with Jesus is so that we can be joint heirs with him, we can rule and reign with him on the earth. And as I pointed out in my last video, not everybody who's saved is going to rule and reign. Some will be priests. If you read uh, Revelation chapter 7, that great multitude that comes out of the great tribulation for Christians, that is when the harlot is killing people, and the harlot will be destroyed before the beast comes on the scene, before the beast begins beheading people, which is some uh, a whole different time of martyrdom. But the great tribulation for Christians is when not... Now, Jews are under tribulation, but people from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation are under tribulation because of their testimony for Jesus, because they're willing to speak up for him. Revelation chapter 7 shows us the fifth seal martyrs now standing in their white robes, and they are going to be in God's heavenly temple for the duration of the millennium. So they get a portion of what you know what's coming to them they get the the priestly portion and then there are others too who um, will go in that third rapture um, people who are having to overcome the beast we see them in Revelation 15 they're standing beside the sea of glass they're singing their own song they have harps in their hands they're not even wearing the white robes of priests they're worshipers they're present with God they're not kings they don't rule they don't reign and this all got me to thinking, and part of what gets me to thinking, too, is comments that I read in the comments section, and then I have to think a little deeper about, you know, what it is that I believe in. Do we actually see certain things in Scripture? Okay, so I want to talk today about the double portion. Okay, the double portion. Okay, what is the double portion? Well, that is the special birthright or blessing that goes to the firstborn. The firstborn get a double portion. They get a double measure of what everybody else gets. So this is a, uh, a part of the inheritance called the birthright, which the Old Testament talks about a lot, that entitles the firstborn to receive twice as much. Part of the reason they get more is because they also carry the burden of the leadership of the tribe or the clan. So they are responsible for really everything that's going on within their tribe if they're a tribal leader. The double portion goes to those who are firstborn and it's a given that they will have it. And we as believers, this is something that is a part of what we get as a result of salvation. Okay, we we achieve a firstborn status. However, it's not a given that every firstborn will actually receive that double portion. I've talked about this in the past before. There are so many instances in, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, about how the firstborn really blew it. Okay, Cain killed his brother. Do you think he became firstborn, got the double portion of anything? No. What about Ishmael? He was Abraham's firstborn, but he wasn't the son of promise, was he? And he didn't have the, the same promises that were given to him as that were given to Isaac, who was Abraham's secondborn. What about Jacob and Esau? 
Well, Esau was born first, but we learn from both Genesis and the book of Hebrews that Esau despised his birthright and he sold it, that he didn't keep it. So that's pretty sad. And it should be a warning as it's given to us in the book of Hebrews as a warning not to despise our birthright, which is that double portion inheritance that God has promised for us. Uh, another person who was the firstborn of Jacob was Reuben. Reuben slept with his father's concubine. He was immoral. And that precluded him receiving the firstborn status. So who was Jacob's firstborn anyway? Well, that would have uh, went to Judah. And it also went to Joseph. Joseph um, didn't actually receive it himself, but it was given to his sons Manasseh and Ephraim. The, the firstborn double portion was split up between those two, uh, Joseph's two sons. But technically, I suppose we could say that it went to Judah. And then Judah became the tribe that the kings went through, and Levi was the tribe that the priests came through. So that double portion sort of split up between two different tribes, the priestly tribe and the, the kingly tribe. Now there is a, a whole nother priesthood that doesn't have anything to do with uh, Judah and Levi, and that's the priesthood of Melchizedek, and that's the kind of priest that we are. It's the kind of priest that Jesus is. He is a king and a priest after the order of Melchizedek. The temple of Melchizedek is really the tabernacle of David. No sacrifices of animals or anything like that. No feast days, no, no rules, no Mosaic law. It's just worshipers, people in God's presence who worship him in spirit and truth. Okay, let's go back to the firstborn stuff again. Okay, the firstborn is entitled to the double portion, but if they're immoral or if they despise it, if they sell it, and this is something all believers can do, by the way. You can sell your birthright by loving the world and the things of the world more than you love God and the things of God. And notice I'm not talking about you're a big sinner. You, you don't lose it because you, you know, commit all these terrible sins. You lose it because you despise it. You minimize it. You don't think it's worth it to have it. You do what Esau did. You you sacrifice the eternal for something that's temporal. Okay, so it's possible to lose your birthright. You can't lose your salvation, but you can lose your double portion inheritance. All right, so the Old Testament gives us a lot of examples of firstborn people who lose their inheritance or somehow or another, something that should have been theirs that was promised to them that could have been theirs they lost through faithlessness. The double portion, spiritually speaking, has to do with the Holy Spirit. And the first time we see somebody um, asking for or wanting a double portion of someone's spirit is Elijah, right? And that's in 2 Kings, I think it's chapter 2. Um, Elisha wanted a double portion of Elijah's spirit. He wasn't necessarily asking for the Holy Spirit because Elisha already had it. Okay, he was one of the sons of the prophets. So they, they all had the Holy Spirit, they all prophesied, they all had a connection with God that um, happened because of the Holy Spirit coming on them. So Elisha already had a portion of the Holy Spirit. Elijah was the, <laughs> the one who had the most though. And so when it came time for Elijah to be caught up, Elisha knew when Elijah was going to go. They're walking together, uh, visiting the sons of the prophets in these various um, places along the way. And then you know the story of how uh, Elisha doesn't want to leave Elijah and he follows Elijah across the Jordan. Elijah says to Elisha, okay, what do you want me to do for you? And Elisha says, I want a double portion of your spirit. What that means is, I want to be your firstborn. I want to inherit from you your that spiritual leadership. I want to be that guy with the double portion. And Elijah said, well, I can't promise you that. But I'll tell you this, if you see me when I go, you'll get the double portion. So, uh, of course, Elijah's taken up in a whirlwind, chariots and horses, 
Elijah's mantle falls to the ground. Elisha picks it up, goes back to the Jordan, you know, strikes the Jordan with the mantle and says, where's the God of Elijah? The river parts. And that um, was proof <laughs> that Elisha now had received the double portion of the Holy Spirit. All right, so that's the Old Testament example. There's another example in the New Testament, and this one is a little more subtle, and uh, most people miss it. I never heard anybody teach on this. It was just something that I observed <laughs> by reading the Bible one day, and I realized, oh, the apostles, the disciples got a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Part of the understanding of this is you have to understand there's a connection that happens between first fruits, which was the day that Jesus rose from the dead, and Pentecost. Uh, first fruits, Jesus rose from the dead. Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit came. Okay, and there's 50 days in between. 50 is a number that's associated with the Holy Spirit. On the day that Jesus rose from the dead, on first fruits, when he rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit came to those apostles. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And they did. And that's in John chapter uh, 20. Okay, so the first portion of the Holy Spirit was given to the apostles. Okay, then after 40 days, Jesus ascended into heaven. Okay, and just as he's getting ready to leave, he says, I want you to wait in Jerusalem, and then you will receive power from on high. Now, most people think that nobody had the Holy Spirit really at all, that whatever Jesus was doing back here was just like a, you know, prophetic foreshadow of what would happen at Pentecost, but I believe what he did was he actually sealed those people in the Holy Spirit. They got their sealing of the Holy Spirit on first fruits. Okay, that's basically the equivalent of being born again. That Holy Spirit was put inside of them. Jesus ascended after 40 days and they waited 10. And then on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down, and they began to speak in other tongues. There was this mighty rushing wind, tongues of fire sat on their heads, and uh, there was actually 120 people there at, uh, to start out with. You had the 12 apostles plus whatever to make 120, and then Peter preached a sermon, and 3,000 people were saved, and they received the first portion of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So the disciples got the double portion. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit twice, two times, two separate occasions, connected by 50 days. Okay, There is a connection. You are to count 50 days to Pentecost. So the first fruits of the barley is connected with the um, first fruits of the wheat. And this is a really important thing that I want you to make it a mental note of, that they these are connected by days that you have to count. Other feasts are not connected that way. Uh, we have the Old Testament example of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me go, you'll get the double, double portion. Now, what's interesting is that when Jesus ascended into heaven, right here on the 40th day, his disciples saw him go. His disciples saw him go, just like Elisha saw Elijah go. If you see me go, you get the double portion. Okay, now let's just think about this. If you and I are going to be part of that group that are the kings and priests that we read about in Revelation chapters 4 and 5 and 7 and 12 and so on, that means that we have the double portion, that we're going to be receiving the double portion. If you're born again, you have your first installment, okay? You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. But the double portion is what qualifies people to actually rule and reign and empower, okay? Empower and authority. You, you gain authority through that second portion. All right, now I'm not talking about a second infilling or baptism of the Holy Spirit or evidence of speaking in tongues or anything like that. I'm talking about this stuff in terms of prophecy. Okay, in terms of end time prophecy. This right here is a pattern between the first time someone receives the Holy Spirit and when they get their double portion. Okay, this is a pattern that's going to show up again, okay, during the end times. 
And remember, first fruits feasts are about the double portion. Okay, they're about the Holy Spirit. They're about receiving the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's about people being commissioned and receiving authority to rule and reign with Christ. Okay, so during the end times, there's yet another first fruits feast that has to be fulfilled, and that's tabernacles. Okay, feast of tabernacles in the fall. So the very first first fruits feast when Jesus raised from the dead, that was barley. And then Pentecost was wheat. They're connected by 50 days, a number that's associated with the Holy Spirit. Okay, during the end times, there's going to be another group that's going to be sealed over the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the only first fruits feast that has yet to be fulfilled. And what's interesting to me is this is a seven day feast that has this other eighth day at the end. It's a seven day feast, not just one one day it's seven days and then there is this other day at the end the eighth day the the fall feast is when the olives and the grapes all the other fruits are offered okay it's the big in gathering big har harvest festival it's huge happy celebration seven days living in in tents or sukkahs okay this feast of sukkot and this is when these particular offerings are given to the Lord. But because it's a first fruits festival, we should assume the Holy Spirit is going to be attached to this festival too. And so I believe this is when the 144,000 are going to be sealed because they're they're part of the olives, right? They're part of that all olive tree, that olive harvest of Israel. So they're going to be sealed in the Holy Spirit. And remember, they are also going to be kings and priests. They're going to rule and reign okay, on the earth. They are believers who are going to rule on the earth. So what we're going to be looking for is a double portion of the Holy Spirit. Double portion. The first day of tabernacles, and really up through the seventh day, there should be uh, a whole, you know, there's a whole week here where this group will receive the Holy Spirit. They're going to be sealed sealed in the Holy Spirit. Okay, it says in Revelation 7 that um, this angel from the rising sun has the seal or signet of the living God, and he's going to seal the Holy Spirit. This is Christ who has God's ring, his authority to seal these people, just like he sealed the uh, apostles in that locked room on the Feast of First Fruits. He breathed on them, gave them the Holy Spirit immediately. He had ascended to the Father that morning. Because he ascended, the Holy Spirit could come. So that first portion was given to them on first fruits. And then the second portion on Pentecost. This group here, the 144,000, will get their first portion over this period of time. And then on the eighth day, this is when they will receive their double portion. Okay, this is when the whole Joel 2 outpouring is going to happen. This is when, uh, in Revelation 5, when the elders are already present in heaven, it says that the Spirit of God is sent out into all the earth. Okay, And not only will they receive, that is the 144,000 receive the Holy Spirit on this day, but that's also when everybody else who has come to Christ will receive the Holy Spirit that day as well. Okay, all the new believers. Okay, so what we have here is eight. Okay, there's eight. Eight is also a number of the Holy Spirit. It's the number of new beginnings. It's the number of a change of time or dispensation. There's a, a whole new thing that's beginning to happen. It's a cycling around to the beginning again, only it's a greater beginning. We can also expect that the grapes of wrath are going to be harvested in the fall too. Yeah, and that will be, of course, when Christ returns right around the Day of Atonement. That's when I believe he'll return, but that'll be a number of years later. What about you and me? I've already talked about how the child of Revelation chapter 12 is born, okay? The woman gives birth to the male child, and then the dragon wants to devour the child, but the child is caught up to God and to his throne, okay? So that throne room is the little indicator that these people, this 
child who is caught up to God's throne room is going to appear in God's throne room, and that's where we see the 24 elders seated on their own thrones. So they're kings and they're priests. Now, what that means, though, is somewhere along the line, they had to get the double portion. <laughs> when do we as believers get the double portion? Okay, I believe our rapture is on the eighth day. That's when the child is presented to God. Okay, in the natural, uh, a baby is born. He's identified as a male child. There's seven days, and then he's circumcised on the eighth day. That's the day he's given his name. That's the day that he's uh, presented to God. If we have an animal, like a, um, you know, a donkey or ox or something like that, that animal could not be presented to God until the eighth day. Okay, that's when God receives um, his portion. He won't receive it during the, the seven days. It's on the eighth day that he receives his portion. Okay, and, and we are we belong to God, okay? That's you know, Jesus died to bring us to God. We belong to him. And we're destined because we believe in Jesus for the double portion. But what that means is you can't despise your birthright. You shouldn't be willing to just sell it off for a low price for the cheap trinkets of this world. Uh, this is something that's extremely valuable. We don't see the value of it particularly in this life, but we believe God that there is value there and that it's worth striving for and persevering for. No matter how many times we fall or fail, we can get up and just keep going again. We persevere. What God is looking for is perseverance. Perseverance, hanging in there, no matter what. You're just going to continue on with Jesus no matter what. Okay, so we know that as the child, the male child who is associated with Christ, who is going to rule and reign, and he's sharing that with us, that there is a seven-day wait before we're going to be raptured on the eighth day. So what's happening during this seven-day period? Well, Jesus has assistants who are going to help him seal the 144,000 in the Holy Spirit. And he tells the four trumpet angels, don't do anything until we have sealed the servants of our God on their forehead. And so we know there's more than just Christ who is sealing these people. Angels don't seal anyone in the Holy Spirit, but believers can, and believers do. I've talked about this in another video that I, if I can find the video, I'll link it in the description box below. But if we're going to be raptured on this day, it means that we're kings and priests, that we have the double portion. When do we get that second portion? We all have the first portion right now if you believe in Jesus and you're born again. You have received the Holy Spirit. He's inside of you. He's made you alive. When do you get the double portion? Okay, and we're going to get the double portion Holy Spirit. Well, that'll be right here. It'll start there. And I guess if you want to talk about the latter rain, that's, that's when it's going to be. The latter rain when the Spirit is poured out on us too. Okay, so anyone who is a king or a priest, anybody who qualifies, anybody who has persevered. Okay, I didn't say anybody who's done a lot of really important, you know, spiritual things, written books, been a, a pastor, been a missionary. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is you persevered in your faith. Perseverance gets a reward. Persevering in your faith gets a reward. You get to rule and reign with Christ. That's it. That's, it's, that's, it's that simple, and it's that wonderful. The way you're going to know that you have your double portion is when you receive the Holy Spirit too. The same time that the 144,000 are going to be getting their first portion, you're going to be getting your second portion. Right? And it, it's really amazing to me because it's like the mirror image of the first century. During the end times, there's eight days between the first portion and the second portion for the 144,000. Okay? Between the first day of tabernacles and the eighth day when they get their second portion. So they'll get their first portion here and their second one here. We'll get our second one here. All right, and the rest of the world who is not among this group here will get their their first portion. Okay, and for some of them, it may be the only portion that they get. 
So I'm just going to put that this is us here, okay? The beginning of the eight days, we'll get our second portion, and the rest of the world, from all peoples, nations, tribes, and tongues, okay? That's basically we're talking about the Gentiles will receive their first portion, 144,000 will get their second portion on the eighth day. Okay, when we go back to the early apostles, um, they got their first portion on first fruits. They got their second portion on Pentecost. We're going to get our second portion on tabernacles. And the rest of the Gentiles will get their first portion on the eighth day. So I know this is a little complex, but if you only have one portion, you, you're going to be a priest um, if, you're, um, if you die during the reign of the harlot, or you'll be a worshiper if you survive through the reign of the beast. Okay, Revelation 15, overcomer group. They overcome because they don't take the mark of the beast or the number of his name, don't worship the image of the beast, and so on. So the first portion that the apostles got on first fruits, 50 days later was when they got um, their second portion on Pentecost. Okay, so both of these numbers, the number 8 and the number 50, are both associated with the Holy Spirit. They're both Holy Spirit kinds of numbers. So instead of counting 50 days like they did in the first century, we're, we're going to be connecting the first day of tabernacles is connected with the eighth day um, solemn assembly. Those days are connected. So there is a connection here between first and second and first and second double portion Holy Spirit outpouring. Application for this, for you and me, is when we are identified as sons, when we are born, as Revelation 12 says, the woman gave birth to the child. The child's caught up later. The birth of the child and the, the catching away of the child, two different things. They're not the same event. And this is not glorified ministry that we're doing in the sense that we're in a glorified body. But it is double portion Holy Spirit ministry. <laughs> double portion. That is, you're going to know when it happens. And there are going to be Christians that the double portion happens to because they are going to rule and reign with Christ. And there's going to be Christians who will watch the double portion coming on other believers, but it won't be on them. And they'll understand why they're not getting it. They'll, they'll know why. There's, there's no question there. There's not a question mark about that. And by the way, everybody who has the Holy Spirit is going to be saved. They're all saved. None of them are going to be thrown into the lake of fire unless they happen to take the mark of the beast. They happen to be alive during that point in time. But by the time the beast begins to reign, almost every believer is going to be in heaven, either in their spirit or actually physically in a resurrected body or a glorified raptured body. The idea of a double portion Holy Spirit for kings and priests just I just made that connection this morning, and I guess it probably seems obvious once you say it, but I, I never thought about it like that, and it just made me happy, so I wanted to share it with you. So if you're new to my channel, I really hope you'll look at some of my other videos. I'd suggest that you start with analyzing the intel, which is when I, uh, where I take uh, the seals of Revelation and put them into Matthew 24. It's I think a very good Bible study series. If you're interested on um, in understanding the whole double portion thing, you might want to look at my series called Obtaining the Inheritance. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and till the next time, I pray you'll have a very blessed day.